In this video, we'll talk about how output sources in the mixer can be routed. By default, regular audio or virtual instrument tracks are routed to the stereo main mix output, but Mixwrapped offers additional output routing options for increased flexibility. If you've placed tracks into a submix bus like these three right here, Mixwrapped automatically reroutes the output of the child tracks to the submix tracks bus. Let's have a look at this in the mixer. Here's my drum bus track, and here are the three child tracks. Let's look at the outputs up here. Over here you can see that the drum bus is going to the main mix output, and then my three child tracks are going to the drum bus, which is this bus track right here. If I take this kick drum right here, and I change the output to main mix, you'll see the track actually disappears. If I close the mixer, you can see that the kick has now been moved, and we can move it back up. And most importantly, it's not in the drum bus anymore. So in a way, this is a way you can take tracks in and out of the bus track, but it's a lot easier just to drag and drop them. The most important thing to remember here is how the signal is getting routed. When tracks are in a submix track, they're getting routed to the submix and then to the master output. Some audio hardware will have multiple physical outs. For example, the audio interface I'm using has eight quarter inch jack outputs on the back of it. If you want to use these, you can use output bus tracks to route audio to these outputs. Let's say, for example, that I want to send the output of my bass track here to a separate physical out of my audio interface so I can use an external hardware compressor. To use these extra outputs, you'll use an output bus track. That's this guy right here. So press plus track, add output bus track. I'm going to move this one over up to where the base is. Let's take a look at the options for an output bus track. Right here where it says default playback device, this means that it's going to output to whatever your regular audio hardware is. If you're using multiple audio interfaces simultaneously, you could change this to address a different one. The most important setting for an output track is under the down arrow right here, where we can choose which physical outputs on the audio interface we're going to use. So this one right here is just 1 and 2. This is the one we're using for everything else. And then over here is 3 and 4. So I'm going to select left channel 3 since my bass is mono. And now anything that's routed to this output track will go to the number 3 quarter inch output on my audio interface. So now that I've got the output track configured, I'll need to route the bass track to the output track. So we'll need to open up the mixer tab. And let's look at that bass track right there. Right now it's still going to the main mix, but I can click this down arrow, and I can choose output bus. And the reason this says output bus 5 is simply because it's track number 5 in the mixer, but if I moved it around, that number would change. And keep in mind also that you can rename these, so I could call this, say, audio out 3. And now when I play back the track, we can see in the mixer that it's playing only on the left side of the output bus track, which means it's playing through output 3 on my audio hardware. And here we've got a separate volume for our output bus track, and you can see it moving over here. And there's an effects insert and separate EQ. You can see the output setting here as well, which is the same as the one over here.